my electricity meter and cutout are in the wrong place. They've got to move. So I am going to hop up there, rip those bad boys off the wall and reattach them over here. It's only about four meters. How hard can it be? By the end of this video, we'll find out that it's a lot harder than it should be, but not for the reasons you'd think. It's also a lot more expensive than you'd imagine. I am not insane. I was joking. This is not a DIYable job. You'll almost certainly be breaking some laws, and there's a very good chance you could burn your house down, or worse, kill yourself. In this video, I will explain from end to end what's involved in getting this done, who you need to talk to, and what the process looks like. Just quickly, a little background so you understand where I'm at and why I'm doing this. When we moved in here, there was an ancient fuse board up on the wall next to the cutout and the meter. Since then, I've had that removed and replaced with a modern RCBO consumer unit, originally on the opposite side of this wall. But we now have plans to renovate. And as part of that work, this doorway will be opened up and will become part of a hallway. So the consumer unit can't live there, the cutout and the meter can't live there. I've already had my electrician back to move the consumer unit over into my utility room on the other side of the house. Next up is what I hoped would be a very simple move of the cutout and the electricity meter. The mains cable runs up the wall over to the current cutout position and all I want to do is shorten that cable and have the cutout moved onto the other side of the wall. So there's not much work to do, it seems like it should be a simple job. Now this is where things start to get a bit complicated. The mains cable coming into the house and the cutout belong to the distribution network operator or DNO. The meter and the isolator belong to the electricity supplier, in my case that's Octopus Energy. This all means I need to get the DNO in to move the cutout and get Octopus Energy in on the same day to move the meter. I then also need to get my electrician to come back in and connect the tails from the meter to, in this case, the fused switch, which will reconnect the power back to my consumer unit. It's a massive pain in the arse and there's nothing other than bureaucratic bullshit stopping the DNO from just reconnecting everything. To get the ball rolling on this, the first step is to contact the DNO and request a service alteration. They will then send someone round to quote for the work. It was at this point I realised my simple plan was far from perfect and really wasn't going to work. The first problem is this cable coming into the house. It's very old, apparently very good cable, but it doesn't age particularly well. Left alone it's fine, but if you bend it or move it in any way, you could damage the internal insulation, cause a short, the result being an unplanned burning down of my house. So best not to mess with it. For reasons that will become obvious later in the video, you can't joint the cable internally. The DNO will only do this outside. So you have to find the cable first, dig a hole in the ground, 1.2 meter square, expose the cable in the middle of the hole, and then dig further down so that you have a 200 millimeter gap beneath the cable. The third problem was the DNO's preference that the new cutout be installed in an external cabinet. I think I could probably have convinced them to install it internally, but I wasn't too bothered, so I just went with their suggestion. Following the DNO's visit, I received a quote for £640. That was about double what I was expecting it to be and is a total ripoff. The DNO is 100% abusing their monopoly position here. Nobody else can do the work so they can get away with charging whatever they like. On top of that, I'm going to be the one that's responsible for digging the hole, doing all the manual labour, exposing the cable and supplying and fitting the external electricity cabinet. After accepting the quote from the DNO, it was then my responsibility to contact Octopus Energy and arrange for them to come on the same day to move the meter once the cutout had been moved and then to get my electrician to come and reconnect the meter back to the consumer unit. In an ideal world this would just involve phoning up Octopus Energy and they would confirm that it's fine, an appointment's been made and someone will come and move the meter. Now I'm usually a big fan of Octopus Energy but this did not go well. An initial call to customer service was really promising they took all the details about the date and told me that they would email their engineering team and someone would be in touch shortly to confirm an appointment. But following that, radio silence. A week later, I called back customer service and as usual, they were very friendly, but couldn't actually help resolve the problem. I was basically told the engineering team is a lot unto themselves. All they can do is send them emails and they will regularly just ignore it and not bother getting in touch with customers. 
Unfortunately, I had to resort to harassing Octopus on X before someone finally got back to me and confirmed an appointment. Now all I have to do is dig a massive hole in the ground without putting a spade through the electricity cable because that would be shockingly bad. And I have to buy and fit an electricity cabinet. I did end up taking a bit of a diversion to install external wall insulation where the cabinet is going to be. I didn't want to put the cabinet up onto the wall where I knew I wanted the external wall insulation because then there would have forever been this penetration in the insulation, a cold spot in the wall. So it made sense to bite the bullet and just get insulation up on this bit of wall before the cabinet went up. I managed to get everything done just in time for alteration day. The DNO were due to turn up sometime in the morning and just to make me nervous, they didn't show up until 11.30. So this was it, the point of no return. They got straight to work stripping off the outer sheath of the old cable. I think this was made up of some kind of hessian cloth and steel tape that was wrapped around the cable. Under the outer sheath, this cable has a layer of bitumen over what I believe is a layer of lead. To remove the bitumen, they fired up a propane torch and melted it off of the cable. This kind of proves the point that this isn't a job you want to be doing inside your house. The lead part of the cable underneath the bitumen acts as the earth inside this cable. So before they break that open, they clamp onto each end and add a sort of extension bit that keeps it connected. At this point, the guys became a little uneasy with me filming what they were doing, but thankfully the rest of the job was uneventful. They very carefully tapped their way into the lead outer sheath and removed that to expose the internal live and neutral conductors of the wire. new cable that joints onto the old cable and runs up to the cutout is very different. From the outside it looks a lot like a steel wired armoured cable, but it's not. It's actually a split concentric cable. It has a solid aluminium core for the live conductor and around that core there are lots of smaller copper cables wrapped. Half of these have a blue insulator on the outside and those are used as the neutral cable, the other half are plain copper and those are your CPC or your earth. This new cable was then jointed with the old cable, surrounded with a plastic shroud that is then filled with a two-part resin and sand as a bulking agent. After that's done, it takes about an hour for it to set rock hard and you have a really strong waterproof connection under the ground. The full job took about an hour to complete and that was me with a new cutout installed in my electricity cabinet. But obviously, it's still no power in my house at this point. So, two hours of labor, a few meters of cable, one underground joint and a cutout. To my mind, that does not equal 640 pounds. Don't get me wrong, everything the DNO did was excellent from customer service through to the alteration itself. I can't fault them. But at the end of it, I still feel like I've been mugged. Shortly after the DNO left, another contractor turned up on behalf of Octopus Energy and moved the meter and the isolator switch very quickly, no problems at all. A few hours after that, my electrician turned up and reconnected the tails from the isolator switch to my fuse switch in the house and we had grid power again. Way. Like I already mentioned, the DNO charged me £640. My electrician charged me for one hour's labour at £117 and Octopus charged me absolutely nothing, so we can't really fault them there. I paid £70 for the electricity cabinet and the hockey puck, bringing the total to £827 plus about four or five hours of my time to dig the hole and fill it all back in again. If you liked this video, please take a moment to mash that like button, leave me a comment if you've got any questions, and while you're down there, a sub to the channel is always greatly appreciated. If you want to see more from me, check out this video up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.